Hi guys! Uh, welcome back. Uh, this week I'm going to be showing you how to paint a British soldier from the Zulu Wars period. And this is actually a user request video. I've had several people asking me how to do this over the last couple of months. But uh, actually, if I have to be honest, this tutorial is probably a long time in coming because uh, Zulu Wars is an extremely popular uh, subject uh, for wargaming. And there are a lot of companies out there who make ranges for the period. I'm going to be using this model, which is by uh, Empress Miniatures. They have a really nice, uh, a fairly substantial range with a lot of variety and a lot of character uh, models in it, which makes it uh, kind of fun and interesting to paint their stuff. But uh, there are plenty of other manufacturers doing stuff with the, for the Zulu Wars, Warlord, Foundry, and tons of others. So you should have no problem in you know finding a lot of sort of options if you want to work in this period. Uh, one more thing. Uh, if you are interested in learning how to paint the other side in this conflict, uh, I actually have already done a tutorial on how to do a Zulu warrior. That was many, many moons ago, in fact, now. Uh, so it's kind of amazing. It took me so long to get around to the British side. But I will link to that uh, down below in the description box for you. As usual, here are all the colors you're going to need to complete painting this model. And, and of course, this as always, does not include the model's skin or hair. I'm going to start out by working on the pants first, and I'm going to give them a quick black base coat, because even though the undercoat is black, I feel like it needs a little better coverage. Now, the pants that the um, Brits wore during this period are kind of a very, very dark black, gray, blue shade. So, uh, my first uh, highlight here is going to be kind of a 50-50 mixture of German gray and black from Vallejo and then I'm going to add in uh, just a hint of dark Prussian blue to start giving that sort of blue cast that I want to see in the fabric. My next highlight then is going to just be pure German gray and again I'm mixing in a bit of that uh, dark Prussian blue to give it the bluish gray shade that I want. I'm going to highlight further now uh, just by taking some Vallejo Neutral Gray and sort of mixing that into my blue uh, German Gray mix. Um, and I'm going to make a couple layers uh, by just adding more of the Neutral Gray in. And I'll add in extra bits of Dark Prussian Blue to taste as I go along just to keep that blue shade in there. Uh, you can do this a little bit differently if you want. I'm going for a very sort of very dark gray black uh, color to the pants because I like how that looks. But you can go for a much more blue base to start if you want something just more blue looking in general so you know start out with like a mixture of black and dark prussian blue and then really highlight up with dark prussian blue as sort of the primary color instead of an accent color uh, and i think both kind of approaches would make for a nice result it's really more just what you kind of like the look of better I'm going to start working on the classic red jacket now. I've got some Vallejo Black Red here and I'm going to be applying it to sort of the entire jacket. I'm going to be a little over generous and fat put it in some areas that I know are not going to be red when I'm done. But it's just kind of easier to have everything covered here, especially in a model like this where there's so much equipment and detail and stuff and lots of sort of deep shadow areas. You probably want to, you know, make sure your base coat is pretty thorough. Uh, the other thing uh, to keep in mind with red here is uh, the pants uh, with this uniform we have a red stripe down the sides. Uh, so you, towards the end of the painting I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm using a number kind of one here for the base coat of the jacket and then I'm going to switch to like a number zero or double zero towards the end and use that to carefully apply a thin line uh, down sort of the outer edges of the, of the trousers. Now because I consider the jacket such an important part of the uniform, I'm going to really take my time with highlighting here and go up really slowly. Uh, so my first uh, highlight is going to be a mixture of the black red and some Citadel um, Mephiston red, which I've mixed into kind of a 50-50 ratio. And I'm just going to start uh, building it up now uh, over the red areas. Uh, lighter, brighter red colors are always going to be on the transparent side. So even already at this point, you'll probably want to, you know, apply a couple layers of paint uh, in some places just to get sort of extra saturation and sort of more color variation. Yeah. 
My next highlight is then going to be pure um, Mephisto on Red. I'm doing the same thing, uh, building it up in several layers uh, to get extra, uh, you know, saturation and contrast. I'm also, at this point, uh, using a smaller brush, my double zero, uh, because this jacket, or, or the sculpting, I should say, on, the, on this figure is very uh, detailed and delicate. Uh, and so if you want to get, you know, precise results and all the kind of wrinkles and folds, uh, it's really good to uh, use something a little bit smaller here. And I should point out with every highlight I'm applying here, I'm not only just uh, going over the jacket, but I'm each time also going to carefully uh, run a line of whatever color I'm working with down that stripe on the pants. We need the red of this jacket to get very, very bright indeed. So now I've moved on to a next highlight layer of Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm applying it the same way. And this color is definitely more transparent than the Mephiston Red because it's meant as a layer paint. And so Citadel makes their layer paints thinner. So this is one you'll definitely want to build up in quite a few layers here because uh, we're working with a really dark base and it'll take quite a few coats before you really get start to get that bright bright red shade which is what you know you really want to see on the jackets from this period now to push that highlight even further to get even more of a bright brilliant red tone i've taken my evil sun scarlet and i've now mixed in some citadel a fire dragon bright which is a very intense very light sort of really intense orange color uh, by itself it has very bad coverage it's very transparent but with mixed with the red it's a great way just to really brighten the color up give it even more sort of set, more of a pop than it already has um, and again it will take a lot of layers but if, if you're thinking about lightening a bright red, uh, I really recommend uh, mixing in an orange because that will make it brighter, but it won't kind of make it get dusty or faded, which is a risk you run from mixing in even uh, yellows in some cases. I'm finishing now with an edge highlight, and I've made that by taking the uh, really bright orange-red mix from last time, and I've taken some Vallejo Beige, which is kind of a pale yellow, and mixed it in there. So you do end up with a kind of a pinky dusty shade if you do that, but if you take that color and apply it very, very sparingly, it can be just add this extra accent kind of pop. So you can see I'm really applying it a sort of mostly sort of along the edge of the fabric pieces along the edge of the sleeves and the and the bottom of the coat and you know where there's where there's sort of seams in the fabric I, I kind of run it along there and when used like that it can be a very effective accent next you're going to want to paint the regimental colors on both the uh, sleeves and on the front of the collar uh, this can be a variety of colors depending on what regiment you're doing but i went for a regiment using uh, green uh, as that color so i'm base coating the areas first with vallejo uh, military green and then i'm going to mix it in a bit of vallejo olive green uh, to highlight it and then kind of continue on by going up to pure olive green and then lightening that even further uh, just by taking some of that uh, Vallejo beige uh, and mixing it into the uh, olive green which will give it a sort of a more pale cast but that's absolutely okay especially if you're kind of blending it into the darker base and also using it a bit as an edge highlight. Now I'm going to be doing some piping and trim on the jacket coat. Uh, make sure you have a really small brush for this and you're using your paint really, really, really thin. Uh, what I did here is I took some of the neutral gray that I already had out uh, and I mixed it kind of 50-50 with some white uh, to form a base. And I'm going to be using it to apply a piping around the sleeves, around the bottom uh, of the collar. And, uh, you know, also I'm going to be uh, painting some of his, his sort of cross strap and belt using uh, this shade uh, as well. I'm going to highlight the piping by just grabbing some uh, pure white and just thinning it down and I'm just going to apply kind of several layers and kind of really build it up. On the really thin piping on his sleeves and you know collar and epaulettes I'm going to make the, I'm going to apply the paint a little heavier just so I don't have to go back over it a lot because on those tiny thin areas you don't want to really have to apply more coats than necessary because it's more of a chance to screw things up and you don't really need like that extra sort of tonal variation that you maybe want to see on his belts and those kind of straps. Uh, so yeah I'm just going to be building up uh, white here uh, until I've kind of got a nice uh, thick uh, coat going. 
Next, I'm gonna start working on the various sacks and pouches he's carrying. You've got a little bit of a choice here in terms of color. Uh, I've looked at some references and sometimes you see these being painted more of a, a cream khaki color. And then other times you'll see them in really just bright white uh, entirely. So it really varies a lot kind of what you wanted to do. I'm really going for the more khaki cream shade here because I want to have some more variation and colors in the uniform. So I made a base coat here of Vallejo khaki gray mixed with a beige, uh, kind of 50-50. And I'm just going to apply a base coat to all those areas. Uh, it will take a couple coats because um, it's, it's, it's pretty uh, thin over that black. And there's also a lot of uh, straps you may want to do in that color like for the water bottle and those are all going to be in that shade. Um, so, you know, just be real careful when you're doing this work. It's another place where you're going to want a small uh, brush, especially when you're kind of dealing with a figure with kind of this level of detail. My next coat on the bags and equipment is going to be uh, just a uh, pure Vallejo beige. I'm applying it just right over my base and uh, I'll build it up a little bit in a few areas as best as I can to get uh, some kind of slight tone variation. But the overall look we're going to get with this ba the bags in the end is going to be pretty light. My next highlight is going to be now a uh, Vallejo Ivory. Same thing, I'm going over the equipment and going for this really light cream shade. You could opt to go with a sort of a darker base when you start and just not get it as bright and really leave this equipment really with a more yellow khaki shade. But I really did want it to be quite um, light and pale, just so sort of kind of like the white, but then just not kind of with that gray base, but instead with like a warmer under base. I'm finishing highlighting these with white, but I'm keeping it pretty uh, thin and kind of not applying it everywhere, just using it as a real accent. Uh, th notice this guy is a sergeant, so he's got bars on his sleeve. Those I think should be a little bit darker, probably. They need to be kind of a warm, kind of yellow khaki, warm, dark yellow color, but so you might want to paint them the same way, but then maybe not highlight them as bright. Uh, so because that might look more natural and if you feel like you get a little too bright with your highlights here You can always go back in with like some seraphim sepia wash for example And kind of pin wash down and some of the shadows on the equipment just to darken things down a little bit Now I've got some Vallejo German camouflage black brown. I'm using that now to base coat kind of his putties or spats uh, his bayonet uh, case and also the sort of the body of his water bottle and also his, his gun stock. I'm going to paint the rifle a little bit different later but I think it's a good base coat since I've got the color out already. And those other areas I'm kind of aiming to make them look a little bit like kind of leather. I'm not really sure that that's com what they were um, and I've seen those spats putties whatever they are actually in black and other shades too but I decided I would go for a brown leathery look here. I'm now going to highlight the uh, spats, uh, the uh, bayonet case, and the water bottle by taking some Blair chocolate brown and going over them first to get just sort of a dark base highlight. And then I'm going to uh, lighten that shade uh, by gradually uh, working in some of the khaki gray. Again, this is all about trying to work with the colors that you're already using and not trying to introduce too many new things into the palette. So I'm first going to mix some of it into the chocolate brown for sort of to allow for kind of a subtle buildup. And then I'm going to eventually move up to uh, just pure khaki gray, though pretty thin because I don't want to get too intense. I want to let that undercoat to show through here. And then finally, I'm going to take the khaki gray and mix just a little bit of beige into it to lighten it further. It'll add a little of a yellow cast. So that'll be the final highlight on these kind of leather brown areas. Uh, and so you'll end up with kind of nice yellowish brown shade, which I think uh, complements in this case very well sort of the warm yellowish tones you've got in his equipment already. And I think I like the look of that in this case better than if it was say more of a reddish uh, brown. I think that would, I think, I don't know, I feel like the, this yellowish tone just kind of fits together uh, better in the case of this particular model.
Now his boots definitely seem to be black leather, so I'm gonna paint those really quick here. I'm just base coating them with black, and then I'm gonna highlight them uh, first with German gray, uh, and then I'm gonna highlight them with a mix of German gray and neutral gray, and then I'm gonna keep highlighting them up till I get to pure neutral gray, which I'm gonna use really for sort of a bright sort of shiny highlights on like the toes and heels and stuff like that. Uh, you can go further if you want to make it look like he has really, really shiny boots, but I decide I wanted to just generally keep the boots fairly subtle and muted looking on this model. I'm going to continue now on the rifle stock. Pretty sure this is a Martini Henry. That's what they were using uh, around this period. Uh, I already painted it German camouflage black brown, but I'm going to go over it completely first with the chocolate brown and then I'm going to mix uh, some saddle brown into the chocolate brown about 50 50 for an, for a higher highlight uh, continue then on with pure uh, saddle brown and then add just a little bit of beige at the end to add sort of an edge highlight for the wooden areas and so this will make the gun stock uh, kind of a more of a reddish brown shade so that it doesn't look too much like the other leather areas that I painted I'm then going to paint the metal areas on the gun with some German gray into which I mixed just a little bit of Vallejo Air gun metal and that's going to be the base on the metal areas. Uh, I also decided to paint sort of the top part of the water bottle canteen so with this color so it looks like it has a metal lid. I then highlighted the metal areas further uh, first by just mixing more of the gun, gray, gun metal, gun gray into my German gray to get a little bit of a brighter metallic shade. So I'm trying to get some subtle highlights here. I don't want it to get too bright too fast. And then I just finished off with just pure uh, gun metal on the bayonet and the, you know, the hardware and the barrel and all that. Uh, I actually went back in with a little bit of black too when I was done and just kind of fine lined around some of the sort of different parts of the gun just to make sure that they really stood out well. And if you want, you could also get some brighter like steel and use that to highlight the bayonet further so it looks like it's really sharp. Uh, yes, I think the buttons on this uniform are kind of brass color. Uh, you don't really see them very much on this model, the, 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 but I still wanted to do them. So I just really base coat those areas quickly using the German camouflage black brown and then I grabbed the Army Painter uh, Greedy Gold and just highlighted the buttons that I could see really quickly. And I also painted a brass tip on the end of his sort of scabbard uh, for his bayonet. Next, I'm gonna start working on his pith helmet. I, I am base coating this here first with a, a mixture of the neutral gray uh, and a bit of white just to lighten it up a bit. My next highlight is just going to be white now, which I've darkened slightly with the neutral gray. So it's sort of what I did before, but now in reverse so that the white is the dominant color. You've got a choice, by the way, when you're painting these pith helmets. I've seen also more of a khaki cream variant, uh, but I've also seen these bright white variants. So I'm doing mine in this case in the more of the bright kind of white color scheme, just because I thought I had enough of the cream khaki look on the equipment already and I wanted to have kind of a balance of those two shades on the model, so that's why I'm doing the pith helmet in the more gray tones. I'm going to finally finish off the hat by just highlighting it with pure white here. Uh, it's, it's white thrill really transparent. You're going to need to apply quite a few layers of white on here and really, really build it up for a while until uh, you've got, you know, sort of the maximum highlight. Uh, here and because you probably want at least parts of the hat to be really really shiny and really bright white because that just looks cool uh, you're gonna want to be doing this a while uh, you might find it easier with as far as the seams and sort of sh sh sort of shading around the band goes you might find it easier to go back in when you're completely done and actually add that in later with a fine brush and a little bit of uh, neutral gray so here is our finished sort of Zulu Wars uh, British soldier Typical of kind of a unit like you would find at Works Drift or something like that. This model, I'll admit, was not for me the easiest to paint. That was just because this the style of the figure is very sort of petite or fine and then very, very delicate sculpting. Uh, uh, sort of a la Perry, even though this is not a Perry sculpt, it's the same sort of style sculpting. And that's something that I personally am not always 
like the best at painting. I don't always get my best results. I think it, it, it does look pretty good though. And I'm certainly very happy, for example, with how the pants and the jacket turned out. I think I might've done a little bit better on uh, some of the equipment and sacks, for example. And I, looking back, I might've made uh, his sergeant's insignia a little bit more orange or left that a little bit darker yellow. And you should probably consider that uh, if you're gonna be uh, painting one of these guys. Uh, and uh, otherwise, I also just want to apologize because I know that sort of overall this video has been kind of dark in terms of lighting. Uh, it's just because it's kind of the middle of winter where I am right now and it gets dark pretty early and it actually stays pretty dark all day up in Northern Europe. So uh, that's kind of why the lighting isn't super great. So sorry about that. I hope, you know, you can still get a pretty uh, good sense of the paint job anyway. So uh, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, please like it, share it, uh, leave me comments with what you thought. I, um, I have a sneaky suspicion that there are some things on this uniform I may not have painted completely correctly. So if there's some minor inaccuracies, I do apologize in advance, but I, I think this probably should give you a pretty overall correct impression of what the uniform uh, uh, did look like. Uh, so anyway, that is all for now. And uh, I'll see you next time.